Hi, this is Sue Ann Pascoe from Ultrasound Training Solutions and I'm here to talk to you today about some tips and tricks around the probe moves and how we define those movements. So here we are talking to you about probe moves. Rhea Dansell has posed a question to the POCUS Twitter world that goes to the heart of effective teaching and learning of ultrasound. And that is, how do we go about defining those probe moves so that our learners can effectively learn these moves and get the pictures much more quickly? I can answer the question, Judge. So I thought I'd share with you the experience that we've had at Ultrasound Training Solutions over the last 10 years. It was about five years ago, I think, that we came to an understanding as to why our learners were struggling to acquire the pictures and struggling to follow our instructions. And the reason was we we're all talking a different language and I'm not talking French and German. We were just talking different moves. So I would describe the probe moves in one way at that time. Somebody else would describe them in a different way and then they'd come back to me later in the afternoon and I would describe them differently. So we started to do a bit of homework and uh, realised that we needed to be a little bit more consistent in our terminology. And the reason we need to be consistent in our terminology is that when you have a new learner who is learning ultrasound, and despite the myth that ultrasound is really easy, they're struggling. They're struggling how to get a picture. And they're un they are cognitively overloaded. So if they are spending all of their time trying to understand what it is that you're saying and trying to understand your instructions, they're not able to actually just concentrate on practicing getting the view. All in the wrist. Uh, wrist. Up, knee, down. So we did a bit of homework and our first step was to adopt the convention that was published in the Journal of Ultrasound in Medicine in a technical paper that was published in 1999. The University of California San Francisco Anesthetics and Perioperative team also did some really lovely YouTube videos which have been um, posted on YouTube videos that were based on these probe moves. And so we started using that convention for a good couple of years and noticed a definite improvement in how quickly our learners were getting to be able to get the pictures. And that's because now we're all just speaking the same language. But we did find that there was still some confusion. And that's because those definitions that were published used one single term, slide or translate, that meant you could move up and down or left and right on the body. The problem with that is then you're sort of saying slide up, slide down, slide left, slide right. And as they're scanning the patient, they're trying to figure out, am I scanning left on the patient or my left? Am I scanning up on the patient or up from my, my perspective? And so we were still having translation issues, even using those words. Does it get easier? No. Yes. And so in 2016, Professor David Barnard wrote a paper that pretty much just said one word for one movement. Genius. And so his article describes the probe moves as being slide, which is movement along the length of the probe in this direction, sweep, meaning movement across the short face of the probe in this direction. He uses the term rocking and then tilt or fan this way. So we came back to our team and had a bit of a discussion about this, and there was vigorous debate. Because there are many different ways that you can describe these, these probe moves. Sliding can also be called translation. He, uh, rocking can be called heel and toe. Now I used to use heel and toe when I was teaching sonographers and that went down fine. But when I've been teaching point of care users, they look at me blank and they go, well, where's the heel and where's the toe on that? And so I found that heel and toe wasn't working for me and yet rock, rocking was working for me. So I'm not here to, to argue the case that you adopt my way or Dave Boehner's way of, of how to define the probe terms. I think the case is for everyone using consistent probe terminology in your department. It's not that 
that everyone, because I think it's going to be just too hard to get a consensus. I'd love to try, it'd be great. But based on the discussion that we've had at our place, and there's been many vigorous discussions, I don't know how we all come to an agreed place where that's the one word that we like to use. So I'm, I'm here to argue for the case that when you're teaching in your department and at your shop, that your team uses consistent terminology. We always tell our learners, be aware that there are other words. And there are times when, uh, when I say rock to a person and they just don't understand what I mean. And if I use the word heel and toe, that triggers the neural pathway for them. So as much as consistent terminology is great, sometimes a different word is going to work for a different learner. So we have come to the conclusion at our place we are using sweeping meaning movement across the short face of the pro and tilt or fan and the fan movement is much like if you think of an ordinary fan and the movement that it makes so the tilt or fan and so any movement across the short face of the transducer cuts the slices and con conducts the scan or the, the like the CT scan of the organ and then movement along the length of the transducer, so sliding movements and rocking movements, centre the anatomy and position the anatomy on the screen. You also have rotation and compression. When I have a novice learner, that's all I give them. But as their probe skills develop, we also need to talk about the pivot move. If I'm talking about a rotational movement, Going from longitudinal to trans, we're generally rotating about the central pivot point of the probe. Sometimes we don't need to rotate around the centre pivot point. And so you need to anchor one end and just move or rotate the other end. So I call this a pivot. I've heard some people call this the door hinge move. Whatever works, but that, that sort of is a more advanced skill and only once some sort of probe skills have been developed. So, thanks Ria, that's a great question. I hope that I've helped answer some of that, the question, and to the other people who've been talking about it on Twitter. I hope that uh, this helps to solve the problem, and perhaps we can all get together and see if we can come to some agreement on which, which words rule.